Shaker, I'm going to start with you, actually. Okay. What does the Special Olympics mean to you? Special Olympics mean to me a lot because of the inclusive world of disability rights to be proven how they can work together and being unified and showing who we really are. So do you think it's going to do a lot for inclusivity in the UAE that you're hosting the Games? For sure, yes. And what are you competing in? I'm not competing, but I am a judo official for the next year's Special Olympic Games. But it's not just judo you know about. I do 9,000 martial arts. Nine? <laughs> yes. I didn't even know there were nine. <laughs> What's your favorite one? My favorite one is karate and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And what does it mean when you did compete? What did it mean for you? What, what that really means is so powerful of me competing in the World Karate Championship in Spain, Madrid, and prove to people, um, disability people can do uh, competition and sports. Yes? No, I was going to say to Peter, let's jump straight in, Peter. How do brands engage? with okay, the Special so Olympics. Um, right, so brand, in terms of engagement for us, I mean, you know, we have um, a lot of people engaged with us as sponsors for the event. Um, we're very, very lucky that we have the support of the government behind us. Um, but our mission is, is absolutely huge. And, you know, it's absolutely key that everybody in the UAE gets on board with what we're trying to achieve. You know, when I first started this as a, as a CMO a few months ago, I did not realize the gravity of, of this event. You know, Special Olympics is unique um, as a movement. And I think, you know, Tala was trying to explain this as she, you know, went through her presentation. But, you know, there are only three, this is how I learned about the Special Olympics. There are only three Olympic movements in the world. Okay, there's the one that everyone knows about. You know, the Olympic Games that happens every four years. It is a winter games and a summer games, but it rotates every four years. And that's about winning. Okay, that's about winning gold medals, bringing them home to your country. And then the Paralympics follows that. Now, a lot of people mistake the, the Special Olympics for the Paralympics, and Paralympics is about physical disability. Okay, and again, it follows the same model as the Olympic Games. It's about winning. In spite of disability, it's about winning. But Special Olympics, as a, as a you know, third one on that list, is much bigger. It's much greater. It does more than any other Olympic movement. Special Olympics is 365 days a year. There are movements all around the world that are happening. It's an engagement process, and the World Games is a culmination of all those sporting activities. So it's huge, it's absolutely massive. And it's for people who have intellectual disabilities, okay? So people who grow up with, with uh, you know, the people of determination, people that grow up with these, these disabilities that, you know, struggle in everyday life, but through sport, they're able to engage. And, and it's huge from that point of view. From a, uh, you know, uh, for a company or a brand to engage with, with this event, there are two things that we need more than anything else. Okay, the first one is platforms. We need to spread the message of these games that are coming next year. So we're looking for, for anybody that we can work with to project the message and talk about what we're doing. And the second one is people. So Tyler mentioned 20,000 volunteers, okay, to help us um, deliver these games. Or well, the volunteer side of things, you know, we're getting there, we're getting there. We've got a lot of people who want to um, volunteer for the games. But we need people to come. We need people to attend the games. So in terms of engagement, more than anything else, you know, the key for us is getting people to come and see what happens for Special Olympics. What does it do for a brand or a company, though, Peter, to show that they're having this conversation about inclusivity? Yeah, so, I mean, I think, you know, inclusiveness is something that has, has you know, has become a bit of a buzzword in the UAE. Um, due to the leadership, you know, the 2021, uh, you know, mandate for for inclusion uh, is, is very much, you know, being spread out there. And the UAE wants to be seen as a, a place where everybody can come, everyone is equal, everyone is able to take part in everything. Um, I think that for businesses, you know, it, it's incredibly important from a cultural point of view um, to be inclusive in the way that they do things. And, you know, the Games is a, is a perfect representation of that. And it brings people together more than anything else. And, you know, Tala mentioned that a lot of people who get involved in Special Olympics, whether you are in the teams that, that deliver the games, or whether you come as a, as a supporter and take part in that way, you go away with more um, than, than, you, than when you came to the event. Um, and it's, it's unique in that regard. You know? what, what do you think about that, Shaker? What do you want people who come to the games 
to leave with? What do you want them to take away? I want them to take away the importance of inclusivity in one of each other and how we can spread the word and spread awareness for intellectual disabilities anyway because it's very important to them because Sayaisi is putting a lot of harness onto us. So whatever um, Peter here says, have to spread the word to show who we really are inside and how we can be really powerful in some sort. And Special Olympics will show the world this is who we are, we are determined and we are strong. So, Shaker, even your words now are changing people's perceptions, I'm sure, as well. Do you think that people will leave the games feeling changed? For sure, yes. Because after you compete in the Special Olympics, it will show we are unified, we are together as one, as a person, and how everyone in different countries will be together and supporting together and actually spreading the awareness of feeling we are strong, we are determined, and we can reach to in any higher levels. Tyler, I'm not sure how you can top that, but I, I wanted to ask you as well about legacy for the UAE. I mean, and not just with the, the, the games and the, the inspirational athletes who are coming, but also the sheer organization of it, those figures that you showed us are extraordinary. I know, they're scary for our operational team, so <laughs> thankfully I'm not part of that team. Um, but yes, the legacy is very important and um, as I mentioned, I come from a public policy perspective and public policy career. Um, so m the majority of my effort is working on the legacy program for, this, for the games. And what we try to do is engage with organizations, both in the public and private sector, to think about policies but also programs and initiatives that are sustainable and can promote inclusion within uh, our society. Um, one also important thing, um, and this was a challenge when we were bidding actually, was the lack of data, and I mentioned um, that in my presentation as well. So when we were bidding, we actually had no data on public perceptions in the region towards people with intellectual disabilities. And so the first thing we did, did uh, when we uh, found out that Abu Dhabi would be hosting the games is embark on a project, um, on a perception survey project, in the region to understand people's perceptions towards people with intellectual disabilities. Um, so we are in the final phases of, of finalizing the data analysis of this, but I think that will be quite insightful to understand from people um, uh, what they think about this movement, but also what they think about um, and how important they think it is to have people like Sheikha in mainstream schools. Um, when we also started this journey, we had a lot of people, fairly senior um, policymakers, come up to us after a presentation on Special Olympics and say, wow, you know, I owe my family member who has an intellectual disability a big apology because I never thought that if I give, gave them this platform, they could be like our athletes. Um, so I think, you know, one of the biggest things that we're achieving and hopefully, uh, hopefully achieving through hosting the games is changing people's perceptions, uh, whether it's family members who uh, thought that um, if, uh, if they have a family member who has intellectual disability, their life is over, it's not, um, but also policymakers to realize that this is an important priority um, in the social agenda, and so we're doing that as well. Uh. Peter, I'm going to give the final word to you because Shaikh has been so inspirational and, and listening to her, it, it, it all makes sense, doesn't it, in a way I think that probably people haven't seen necessarily before. But today is about bravery. Do you think that it is, takes a leap of faith or an act of bravery for companies and brands and things to get involved? Yeah, yeah, I do, because I think that, you know, um, as much as we talk about it, it's all about actions, really, more than anything else. And, you know, what we're trying to do with the games is kind of stick a flag in the ground um, and say, you know, this is where we want to go and this is the direction we want to head. Um, but then it's about the legacy and the legacy is about doing it every day and it's about, you know, genuinely being inclusive and, you know, sport brings people together. But then outside of that, what happens? And I think, you know, Tyler's touched on this a lot. And we've, we have plenty of meetings because, you know, that about legacy, because what we're doing as a games is, is very much about building onto that. 
And I think, you know, the meeting we had with Her Excellency um, yesterday, the, uh, you know, Head of Community Development, we brought up the subject of what, you know, the government could do to lead companies to set mandates and, you know, set KPIs and, you know, make laws to, to bring people, you know, together. Um, she kind of refuted that immediately and said, look, I think it's fine to have KPIs and fine to have percentages and say, you know, we should have a percentage of our, but it needs to come from somewhere a lot more sincere than that. It needs to be something that is driven by the leadership, is driven by leaders of companies, driven by individuals to say that, you know, we will bring people in on their best merits and we will go out there and we will, you know, widen the net and we will make time and we will make, you know, space for people with intellectual disabilities um, to come in and to be part of our teams and to find a way to get the best out of them and to make that work. And, you know, I can tell you the government here is doing that. And I think that the best way that companies can really get involved and engage is to follow their lead you know, because the lead here is strong. Um, so, you know, that's, yeah, that's my thoughts on the subject. Brave and inspirational, all three of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and on that note, I'm sure you're starving. Let's go and have some lunch and some chats.